What's going on guys? I want to do a video comparing Safari Lance holster options and the ones I have in front of you obviously are the ones that I use. On the ends we have the 6354DO and in the middle we have the 6390RDS. I love the DO, I do not like the RDS. I don't think it's that great of a holster, at least in my opinion and from how I've used it. That could differ to you, but if you are looking between the two, I would recommend the DO or the RDS if you can get your hands on it. So starting out, the DOs were the first two Safari Land holsters I ever bought, with this being the third, the RDS. I love the DOs. I use the DOs every time I go to the range. I tried using the RDS a couple times. It just wasn't working, and thank God I brought my DOs with me because, or my DO. Yeah, I don't need two holsters. I can only use one at a time. But thank God I brought my DO with me the same day because I, I hate the RDS. I don't like it at all. It might just be my holster or it might just be me, I don't know. So starting out with the DO, let me get some of these out of the way. Starting out with the DO, the first one I ever bought was this Ranger Green one. It's an awesome holster. Now, it's for a Glock 17 with a light. The uh, Safari Land holsters are pretty universal with the lights they fit, well, at least the stream lights and the Surefires or what they claim to fit, and they do fit. I have tested it, they fit both, so no worries there. So this is my Glock 17 here. It is clear. So this is the footprint of the holster with a Glock 17 in it. As you can see, it's nice. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. It does have a barrel plug and a light cover to keep any debris from coming up in the bottom of the holster, which I don't really see how, if the holster's mounted, you know, right side up, this is down. I don't really see how dirt and stuff will get up in there, but I'm sure it will, so I'm glad that they do include these. I know with some of the uh, DOs, you can take the barrel plugs out and fit a, a little wider variety of Glocks in them. I'm not sure about um, any of their other holsters that fit other guns, but I do know some guys take this barrel plug out and they can fit uh, guns with comps, uh, 19s and 17 holsters with a comp, so on and so forth, or 34 holster with a 19 with a comp. So if you have a 19 with a comp and you buy a 34, I believe all you have to do is take the barrel plug out of the end here and you'll be good to go. So this holster does have an exposed uh, optics hood. Is that a bad thing? Yeah, it could be if you run an optic and you don't want stuff getting up in here to bust the glass or, or dunk up your optic. But and again, the holster is mounted right side up, so I don't really see how that would happen. If anything, it would be coming from the top here, which this is also exposed. But to each their own, I still like the holster. Moving on to the side here, this is the first thing I ever did to it was the QLS system from Safari Land. It is an awesome system. I would recommend doing it to every one of your Safari Lands or any of your other holsters if it's uh, applicable. So all my Safari Lands get ran on a setup like this. A mid-ride, the leg strap, the female fork, and the male fork. Now the holster, I'm sure everybody's seen this by now, just slides into this fork and clips in. And it locks in with these tabs and then you depress the tab, slide it up, swap holsters, whatever you need to do. This becomes important later in the video with the RDS. I will explain more on that later. Again, one of the reasons I don't like the RDS over the DO. So with the DO, the way that it holds onto the gun to keep it from coming out is with their uh, quick release system, I forget what it's called, where you have to depress this tab to draw the pistol. Once you depress that tab, it lets go of the gun. Uh, again, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but it locks onto the ejection port, and when you depress this lever, it lets go, and you can draw the gun. So, with that, a lot of people are complaining that the DOs and their uh, quick release system hurts their thumbs with this tab. Apparently it's sharp or, or something, and when they go to depress it, it hurts their thumb. I never had a problem with that. So I never did the nub mod that everybody talks about. I might get it in the future to try it out, but as of right now, I don't really see a uh, reason to get it. The holster doesn't bother me. I've drawn out of this thing hundreds of uh, hundreds of times. So 
I'm gonna cut here and then I'm gonna move on to the RDS and some of the stuff that I do like about it and the rest of the stuff that I don't like about it. Okay, moving on to the RDS, the 6390 RDS. Again, this is for my Glock 17 with a light. Again, it fits Surefire or Streamlight. So here's my Glock 17. Gun is clear. So with this holster, again, I run the same fork as on all of my other Safari Land holsters. Super easy, super quick. Differences with the RDS, other than overall design of the holster. A little bit different spring mechanism for the active retention. Now with the RDS, you have a optics hood with a flip up cover. So if you were to have an optic on this gun, when you went to draw it and pull the gun out, this hood would flip up. And then once you reinsert the gun, you flip the hood down. What I like about this design is the front is covered. So you have no more, no more gap for your optics hood. So any of those guys that might've been getting debris up in here, gunking up their optic, no more with this. And on the back, for the most part, there is a gap, but there's nothing you can do. So it is protecting your optic a little bit more. The mechanism on mine, this updated mechanism, as opposed to this mechanism on the DO, at least on mine, it's stiff. I, I've tried putting oil in here. I've tried getting oil down inside the mechanism itself, but it, it's stiff. It's just not broken in, I guess, so that's part of my problem. So it does come with a thumb guard, which is removable. I am not a fan. I thought I would like it. I feel like it just gets in the way, so I end up removing it every time I use it. I put it back on for the sake of this video. Along with the optics hood, this is removable. I'm also not a huge fan of, of the back part. Uh, this is removable as well, which I do remove it, even though I don't have an optic. I just, I think it gets in the way most of the time. So I do end up removing it again. I just put it back on for the sake of the video. Just because every time I reinsert the pistol, I, I don't want to have to come back down and close it. You know, it doesn't really matter, but oh well. Going back to the locking mechanism on the RDS, I do not like it at all. I don't know what happened with this holster when they designed it and, and revamped it from the DO, but they ended up moving this locking mechanism just enough to the point where it is not comfortable or easy to access, at least for me, at all. What ended up happening was between the two holsters, with well, this one's design, the, the uh, I guess, thumb drive or, or whatever you want to call it, ended up getting moved up just enough so that when you go to draw the uh, handgun, again, you're not going to be able to see this with a thumb guard, it, it puts it at such a place where your thumb is, is so stretched out, it's just uncomfortable to, to get it out of the holster. I'm not a fan. I'm really not a fan, and that's the main reason why I don't like this holster at all, other than the fact that it is a little bit larger of a footprint than the DO. I, I hate where this has been placed on these, or at least mine. Super uncomfortable and awkward to kind of to grip and release it off the gun, as opposed to the DO. It's a little bit easier to see on the DO without the thumb guard. It, it, it falls in a, such a more natural position for me at least and that's why I like the DO so much better. Now with the RDS, this holster did not come with the QLS fork. My DOs did and I got all of these holsters off Op Tactical. So it's very nice that they do include the QLS forks with the DOs. I don't know why they don't do it with this. But it was an extra $20 I had to spend, which kind of sucked because this holster was a little over $200, I believe. I think the total bill for everything all said and done with the holster and the QLS4 shipped was around $272, which kind of sucks because when I bought my DOs and they came with these forks, it was around $200. Sorry for the weird cut there, guys. I got a phone call. So when it comes down to these two holsters, and if you have the option to get either or or both, 
I would still recommend to get the older Dio. I mean, it depends situationally what you need it for. If you need the thumb guard, obviously get the RDS because the Dio has no option for it. You cannot put one on, it doesn't come with one. So if you need a thumb guard, obviously get the RDS. If you're, if you're between any Safari Land holsters and, and you want this kind of military duty style, get the RDS if you need the thumb guard. If you don't, I would still stick with the Dio. It's a little bit smaller of a holster. It's a little bit more comfortable to draw from, at least in my experience. And it's a little bit cheaper. And it comes with one of their most useful parts. So, I don't know. Options up to you. I would recommend this. I don't like this at all. I'm probably going to end up selling it. Going from there, the every Safari Land holster that I've owned needed a lot of adjustment on the lights. So when I got every single one of my holsters, they were super loose, like to the point where you could, it, it felt like you were able to draw the gun almost if it didn't have the uh, retention here, which isn't great. The adjustment for the tension on the light, because that's what actually, on the Safari Lane, what dictates how tight or how loose of a draw you have, isn't the ejection port lock it is the light down here that is how tight that it holds onto your gun it doesn't touch anywhere else anywhere else in here the gun does not touch it is only on the light so when you get your safari land holster you will probably have to adjust it no matter which holster you buy i've had to adjust all of mine this is where it is on the rds down in the back more you will have to adjust it do not just go ham on this guy with the Allen key they provide you and just start spinning it and spinning it and spinning it. It will break or you will mess up your holster. I would go half turns or full turns and then back it off the same amount, half or full, until you get that desired position because for whatever reason, these screws feel like they're cross-threaded in and stuff and an accident waiting to happen. So I would recommend doing a half turn, quarter turn, or maybe a full turn and then backing it off that same amount. If you're going to be there a while and but it, it, it's just how it is. But once you get it adjusted properly, your gun will have a smooth draw with just enough retention on it to where it's not going anywhere and there's minimal play. As you can see here, the RDS, about the same amount of play. And my original Dio, no adjustments after I got it and did the initial adjustment on the light, no adjustments. Lots of draws out of this holster, nothing. About, about that much play is how much you want on the gun. And again, you're just going to have to feel it out based on what light you're running and whatnot. You want a semi-smooth semi draw with just enough tension on the gun. And, and as you can see, not a lot of play. Some guys like it a little bit tighter. I don't. I like a little bit smoother of a draw. I don't want to feel like I'm having to rip the gun out of the holster. So... When it comes down to these holsters, they're, they're all great options. They're all really good. They're proven. They've been used by just about anyone you could think of, any agency, any group of guys. They're all great holsters. I'm just not a fan of my 6390. I don't know if it's just my holster or if anyone else is having the same problems or experience with this the new 6390s. If you are, I'd love to hear it in the comments. If you think I'm an idiot, I'd also love to hear that in the comments. I'm a 6354 DO guy not an RDS guy. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Like I said, if you want to see anything else, uh, drop it in the comments and I'll try and make a video about it. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one.